Happy Friday, guys. This is kind of becoming, I guess, our annual video because November 14th was our two year pan anniversary. So we've been in. <laughs> Very funny. I know, I'm always funny. Um, so we've been in Panama now for a little over two years. And last year we did like a one year kind of best and worst of Panama. And it was kind of fun because Brian and I each came up with our own list of good things about Panama and not so good things about Panama. And we talked about those last year. I will link that below in case you're interested in seeing that. Now we haven't watched it. We don't watch our videos no. after we post them. <laughs> so we lived it. We don't need to watch it again. Um, so I don't really, I know one thing I said last time that was on my bad list, that's on my bad list again, but I can't remember what else I had from last year. I, I don't know. Really okay, so we're gonna have a fresh list this year. After being here for two years, we're gonna go through some good things and bad things. Uh, we have not discussed these with each other, except for one, because you know, blabby mac loose jaws over here <laughs> said what his was but it just so happened to be one of mine too um but we don't discuss these ahead of time we just fly by the seat of our pants around here as you know if you watch our channel um and what the only thing that we said is that we were going to come up with three good <clears throat> excuse me three good things and three bad things about panama i kind of cheated a little bit We'll get to that in a minute. Um, also, if you notice, this doesn't look like Bocas because we're not in Bocas. We're in Altos del Maria right now. And information about that will be coming out in future videos. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit notify and do not forget to join the IGO Panama Facebook group because that is where every question you ever had about Panama, whether you're looking to move here, if you already live here or you're looking to just visit is going to be answered over there for free. Again, linked below. Okay, without further ado, let's get to it, yeah? Okay, do you wanna go first with your good? Do good. one good and then I'll do a good. We'll go back and forth, okay. I would say probably my number one thing is the anxiety level here is way lower than being in Los Angeles. Oh, God, I yeah. just, the interactions with people on the daily, you know, you don't have anybody flipping out on you. Everybody's always helpful. Um, I mean, we go into government buildings, you know, needing information and with our limited Spanish, everybody's still patient with us. Nobody loses their marbles. Nobody gives us grief. Um, you know, most of the time they're more than helpful trying to figure out how to deal with whatever issue that we need. And, uh, and just, everyday people across a you know when you just meet them on the street or in the stores you know it's just a happier group of people yeah it's, and they're not worried about what kind of purse you're carrying yeah. and <laughs> well, i'm usually a mess anyway so. <laughs> we're both messes we did not belong in los this. angeles we are feral jungle human beings we were very out of place in la yeah. i'm gonna let you go ahead and do all three of your good ones okay go ahead <laughs> see how the rules change constantly um, I would say another top one is we've discussed this, we've had a video about it and recently we've had to do deal with it more, but the healthcare system here, it's really top notch. Um, we've had to deal with some things here and we've tried to deal with them in, uh, the States and just, you know, I have motion picture, uh, health insurance, you know, it is like top tier, top notch. And just getting anything done with them is really more of a pain in the uh, butt than it is dealing with anybody here. And the fact that when you come here and you go to a doctor, you deal with the doctor. The doctor takes your blood pressure. The doctor takes your temperature. The doctor talks to you. And the doctor discusses options and goes through the whole thing with you. Um, way more than I've never been with a doctor in the States. For sure. Yeah. And I guess my last one would be the sense of accomplishment we get when we're doing something on our property. You know, it's, mm. I'm a creative person. That's what I do in Los Angeles. You know, I'm, I have a creative career, but nothing gives me more joy than, you know, actually completing something on our property. You know, whether it's, our dock, you know, getting our boats going, uh, 
planting our food forest. It just, you know, and then actually picking something off it and actually eating something that you planted. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Ago. It's really neat. So. Those, are, Those are good. Three good ones. Okay, he did good. And we have one that's the same. Okay, so I'll go through mine. And this is where I cheated. I'm not even lying when I said I could not come up with three bad things about Panama. I could only come up with two. So to keep with the six, I did four goods and two bads. Okay. We'll see if he hates Panama Rule more change. than I do, because if he has three, then he does. Okay, so I think the first good thing for me is that after two years, like in the beginning, Panama felt like home, but now that it's been two years, it really feels like home to me. Like the first year you're kind of running around and you're trying to figure out things and like, who do you deal with and who do you not deal with and where do you get this and where do you find that and how does this work? And, and we've kind of worked out the majority of those kinks. So I think year two for me especially has been more about settling in to Panama and it being our home. Now, I'll tell you, Brian goes back to the States every three months for work. I've not been back to the States since July of 2021. So I'm like a year and a half out from being in the States and I have zero desire to go to the States. I could go with him every time if I wanted to. I have no desire to. My kids are there. They want to see me. They can hop a plane and come visit, which they're going to be doing in May. Um, but I really, I have no desire to go to the United States. It doesn't really feel like my home anymore. And Panama does, which is kind of strange because there are still so many challenges. I mean, language barrier and, you know, just kind of figuring things out because things are different here than they are in the U.S. and what we're used to. But it, there's still a comfortability factor for me, even in the challenges, which I find interesting. OK. Uh, number two, along with the um, kind of feeling at home is this sense of community and wanting to get involved in the community around us. And if you've watched the videos kind of recently, we had one about the Indigenous Bags Co-op um, that I created in the village across from us, Loma Azul. And for me, being able to get involved in a project and like create that project and kind of oversee it and see it through to the point where the women in Loma Azul, they're making these traditional bags and they have no outlet to sell them. And then uh, I said, you know what? If you make a bunch of these, I'll put them online and start selling them. And they have sold. I mean, we've sold total between a couple shipments that we've done um, over 150 bags. So we're doing really good. And the ladies of Loma Azul are benefiting. And it does my heart good knowing that not only is Panama the place I chose to live, but that I can kind of integrate myself into a community that A, does not speak any English at all. There's no English going on up there. Zip, zilch, zero, none. But getting my ideas across to them, them forming a co-op and getting involved and making the bags and being so excited to have that opportunity. It's just been, I hate the word blessing, but it's just been very uh, fulfilling for me to be able to give back to Panama in some way, because I feel like the country's given me so much. Uh, again, I'll link the indigenous bag uh, information down below. Uh, we'll have a new batch of bags in February. Okay, next is one of the ones that is Brian's and it's the medical care. So you haven't really experienced the medical care here. No, just so everything, he, yeah. everything. So he goes and takes my experiences and passes them off as his own. But, um, but he's exactly right. Uh, I've been dealing with some very frustrating medical issues and uh, I'm going to actually start talking about that next week because there's some serious stuff coming up that's actually happening next Friday. Friday. So uh, if you're interested in medical care in Panama, definitely subscribe. Uh, because I'm going to be talking about that and talking about my experiences here, but it's everything that Brian said, and I'm going to get more into detail about that next week, uh, about being properly diagnosed after being misdiagnosed in the United States by UCLA Health in Los Angeles, one of the top medical centers. And then I go and get diagnosed properly, finally, in Hospital Chiriqui in David. Okay, so... 
The medical care here, I have been very, very happy with it. And if you watch next week's video, you'll see why. And then my fourth good one, because I cheated, is amenities. Um, the We always knew we could get Amazon here and get anything we wanted delivered here, but we really didn't utilize it at all that first year. No. We didn't. I mean, we're just so busy just running around like chickens with our heads cut off, just trying to figure out Panama. Um, but now we've really leaned into the Amazon. So anything that we were living without, we can now get it. And, you know, it's not that big of a deal usually. I mean, usually we can find most of the stuff we need in Panama, but sometimes we need specific things. Like I'm an online teacher and I teach sciences and sometimes I need, you know, lab equipment and things like that that I'm just not gonna find in Panama. So I can order it online via Amazon and I will have it within what? With easily within two weeks of oh, ordering easy. it on Amazon, generally way less than that. Um, I had a super craving for red vines, that licorice that you will never find in Panama. And so I ordered it on Amazon, satisfied my craving and moved on with my life. So anything you want to get, you can get it here. You might have to yeah. use Amazon, but you can get it here. All right, bad. How many bads oh, did you come go. up with? Yes. Well, you told me three because those were the rules. <laughs> so I came up with three. Notice group members, how my yeah. husband follows all the rules. Try it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going first again. Yeah, you're going first again. Right. Well, first one, uh, if you've paid any, any attention to anything that happened this summer, uh, protests. Oh, God. Um, it, it's <laughs> a pain to any Panamanian, uh, you know, it affects everybody across the country. You know, we had over two weeks worth of protests uh, countrywide that just shut the whole uh, uh, country down. It just shut Panama completely down. Um, it was a hard time getting vegetables. Luckily, we got stuck in a very, I want to say, nice bubble. And uh, it really didn't affect us much at all, except for the fact of not being able to get home or to see our dogs. But, you know, they can care less. They got their food and they were happy. <laughs> and they had Popsy. You know, Popsy let them do whatever they want. They're like kids and, you know, sitting there with grandpa. Um, so, yeah, it's, it never really seems to solve much. It just seems to prolong everything. So, you know, it's, but it's not my place to tell them how to protest or whatever. It just gets frustrating for us and, you know, and Panamanians, Panamanians as well, yeah. because, you know, all you have is one small group. And it shuts the country down for the rest of the Panamanians who are trying to get stuff done. So it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, drivers and the speed traps. Uh, oh, if there's any, any monies coming into Panama, they're all coming from him, from speeding tickets. Two. Same. Two. And how many did you get off on? I, if I didn't get a ticket, I didn't get a ticket. <laughs> And how many have you had? Uh, if you go look in the system, zero. Uh, okay. It's coming. <laughs> but yeah, uh, driving the Pan American. Um, our uh, uh, hack is make sure you get Waze. Waze will tell you where every speed trap there is along the line. You know, because what happens down the Pan American, it goes from 100 km, uh, kilometers an hour, to 40, to 60, 80, 20. It just jumps for no rhyme or reason, and they always seem to put the uh, speed traps right in the same spot, you know. And then you have the bus drivers, which are, you know, basically kamikaze drivers, and it just it gets a little out of hand, you know. And I come from driving a motorcycle in Los Angeles, so I deal with it pretty well, but it's still a little frustrating. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, number three, like you said, it was hard to find things you didn't like, but. Uh, the one thing that has kind of disappointed us about our property and where we're at is we thought we would come across more wildlife. Um, yep. You know, it's uh, the ocean life is great. You know, it, with the stuff that we've seen off our dock, you know, we've seen tons of animals. Oh there. But as for mammals type animals, you know, we see plenty of frogs, plenty of snakes, you know, stuff like that. Birds. Sloths. Sloths. Sloths are pretty much the only thing we've I've seen on armadillos. Mm -hmm. I've seen three baby armadillos and we've seen a squirrel. So, I mean, other than that, you know, problem is with the area we're in with the, all the indigenous, they tend to eat everything. 
So if there's a lot of hunting there and nothing goes unscathed. And we had monkeys once, but you we were out of town. We had monkeys once, yeah. You were I out of missed town. that. Yeah, <laughs> once in two years we had monkeys. Okay, those are pretty good bad ones. We only share one. Okay, so I have two. All right, so protests. If you watched our videos on that, um, we were, I hate to say the word stuck because we couldn't have been in a better place, but we were in uh, Vistamar, which is next to Coronado, for the vast majority of the protests because I had left Focus the day the protests started to go pick up Brian in Panama City, flying in from Los Angeles. Um, I got stopped a few times along the way, but it wasn't organized yet. And then by the time we got to Panama City and started to turn around, it was very organized. The entire country was shut down Food was not moving, gas was not moving, uh, ambulances were not moving. People were stuck on the Pan American for like days, no water, no food. It, it was terrible. Um, and I'm so, again, feel fortunate that we were here and I was not in Bocas alone because rarely do I come and pick him up. Usually he flies to Bocas and for whatever reason, oh, cause we were coming back through Altos and right. going through this way. Um, I decided to pick him up that that time. So had I been in Bocas, literally where we were, I would have been cut off from the world. At that point we had a gas gen or a diesel generator. I would not have been able to get diesel because I wouldn't have been able to get to town. Everything was closed off. And even if I could get to town, uh, there was no diesel to be had because it wasn't being delivered. I would have been out of electricity. I would have been out of food. Um, just not a good situation to be in, especially by myself. Of course, I would have Popsy and Timo there, but their way of living is definitely different than my way of living. So that would have been a little it bit didn't of a problem. Them it didn't, they're like, much at protest, all. They're what like, protest? Eh. <laughs> Whatever. We're, We're like, good. oh my God, the sky is falling. Um, but yeah, the protests here, and, and that was just the big one. I mean, we deal with smaller ones, shutting things down, Fairly regularly, yeah, especially in you know, and Usually when that happens, it's just an inconvenience. You know, yeah. we're trying to get to Changanola or something and the road's closed. So. Exactly. Okay, so my other bad one is kind of a two-parter. Maybe we could call it three. I don't know. It's kind of a two-parter. It's all about medical. It's about medical for humans and it's about medical for pets. So you're probably saying, but Mary, you just had medical on your good list. Yes, I did. But I'm going to specify this toward Bocas. Um, when I started having my medical issues... Bocas is a little isolated for serious medical problems at this point. Um, I've had my medical issues and I have to go to David. Um, I've been kind of sweating it out literally and figuratively in Bocas uh, for the past few months uh, because I need surgery and I wasn't able to because he's been um, in the States and I needed someone to help me and had something gone wrong while he was gone. It could have been a serious situation just because the like critical type medical care is not available there. Uh, Popsy cut his eye with a piece of wire on our property. <sighs> we took him to Changanola and they couldn't do anything for him there. And Changanola is kind of the bigger hospital, uh, it's public hospital. They had to ambulance him to David. And we actually ended up taking him to a private ophthalmologist in Panama City as well. So where we are in Bocas, the medical care is a little eh. If you get into the city, it's great. Pet care, vet care, and I know this was on my list last time because we had had issues with Selva last year. We had issues this year too. I know that this car passed. And it's the same thing. Just the vet care in Bocas is just not anything for something critical. Like if your dog needs a shot or needs to be spayed or something like that, they can pretty much deal with it. But there's no x-ray machine in the entire province and Selva had some issues. She needed an endoscopy uh, and a colonoscopy and x-rays, and that could only be done in David. So having to drive three hours for that. So that that was pretty good. That was vet uh, Don Henry or Don, Don Henri, Don. I guess it would be, I don't know. Um, and then uh, we also have another vet that we really like that's in Panama City, and that's Grupo Felino y Canino. Uh, they've been really great. Uh, with us and with some friends that we recommended over there as well. But so it, again, it's kind of location, 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 like with medical for people or vet, focus, eh, get into the city and you're good. Okay, well, that's it then, I that's guess, for this it. year. 
So I guess you'll just have to wait until next year and see how year three goes for us. I'm thinking it's going to go pretty good. There's a it's lot. Starting, there's going to be a lot happening. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of changes, guys. Major changes are in the works. So you do not want to miss an episode. Make sure you subscribe below. Make sure you click notify so you get notified when we post a new video. And make sure you join that IGO Panama Facebook group where we'll answer every question you ever had about anything Panama. So until next Friday, when I'll be talking about medical issues, we'll see you. Have a great week.